This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host and a journalist from Finland. I first moved to Pakistan in 2012 and I've been hooked ever since. In this program, I'm going to be taking foreigners and diplomats visiting the country on a tour around the city. And we're going to be visiting some of their favorite places here. So let's go! So today, we're here in Islamabad's F6 sector, and we're here to meet with Marion Fannix, who is Germany's youth ambassador to Pakistan, and she's also the first secretary for development aid. And she wanted to meet in this lovely boutique and cafe because it has some connection to her work. So let's go find out. Hey, Marion. Hey, Hi, so good nice to, to see, see you. you. How are you? Good, how are you? Great. So what a wonderful place this is. Isn't it? I love oh. to go shopping here. Oh my god. So tell me, how long have you been in Pakistan now? It's funny that you ask because it's almost exactly one year oh, that wow. I've been here. Yeah, what what, what date so was it? It was in April. Uh, well, it was end of March, okay. so a little bit more now. But yeah, oh, it's so quickly. one year anniversary. <laughs> Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So how do you like it so far? Well, I have to say Pakistan still surprises me every single day. Yeah. But overall, I love it. I do. Amazing. Great. So tell me a little bit about this boutique. Um, you said there's some connection to your work that you do at the embassy. Yeah, like this store, um, it's run by an NGO mm -hmm. that does really important work for the community in Rabalpindi. Okay. And they focus, one thing that you see here is that they focus on women and empower them by doing handicrafts. Wow. And it's really beautiful handicrafts for really talented women. And I actually visited the factory once where oh, they do their things and it was one of my most memorable experiences wow, here. So tell me, what was it like there? What did you see there? Well, it was one example of how I think work environment should be mm -hmm. because it was it was safe, it was secure, there was a lot of light and the women actually had fun doing it. No way. So wow. it was good and I think you need more spaces like this in Pakistan, especially for women. Wow. So yeah, let's take a look at some of this stuff. That's pretty yeah. interesting. So all handmade, huh? All handmade. By yeah. these women. And yeah. they design it, they do it, like it's really amazing. It's wow, inspiring. look at that. And what is this? This is like some kind of a little pouch? It's like for your little... <laughs> secrets maybe. Wow, I should get one of these. What else does Germany focus on in terms of development? Well, Pakistan is a really important partner um, for Germany and we focus on three areas at the moment. And one is sustainable energy okay. um, and the other one is sustainable economic development mm -hmm. and that's where we also do uh, female empowerment and especially technical and vocational training because we do think that for the future of the youth of Pakistan. Wow, I mean, look at this stuff as well. I mean, I could totally buy some of these oh, bags. Bag. Amazing. But should we have a look at the clothes? Yeah. Just love I buy the whole store. Right, I know, huh? And they design it themselves as well? Yes, they design wow. it and then some of them they stamp, some they sew. So tell me a little bit more about what Germany does in, in Pakistan, actually. Well, Pakistan is a really important partner for Germany and we focus on three main areas. One is sustainable energy, because of course without electricity and light it's right. difficult uh, yeah. to develop. And then we work in sustainable economic development, oh. where is also where this comes in, because we focus a lot on vocational training, because Pakistan has a lot of youth and what they need is training that mm -hmm. they find decent jobs, because it's not only about working maybe in an informal sector, but actually have decent work. Yeah. Um, and then the third area is good governance, uh, where we mostly focus on local governance. So we go into the provinces and try to improve the relationship of the state and the citizens. Wow. Yeah. And which one of these issues is the closest to your heart? Well, one thing that is really close to my heart, under the good governance, we also support the Pakistani state uh, in helping Afghan refugees, because, you know, Pakistan is still um, the biggest country where African refugees came in and if you see the work we do there together with Pakistan it's really heartwarming. Wow, that's amazing. So fascinating what you do here. So what do you say if we go upstairs now for a cup of coffee? If we can have a cup of chai, I'll come. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's go. Do you often go hiking in the Margolas? 
I do. I try to go every weekend, actually. Wow, once a week? Sometimes even twice, but only if I feel really sporty. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, I can't manage to do that. I'm way too lazy for that. Like, I love the view there, but especially when it gets too hot, I'm just like, no, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you won't find me there in July. That would be yeah. fun. No, that's amazing. So is, is Islamabad um, what you expected it to be like, or is it very different? Um, I have to say it's very different. Before I came to Islamabad, I imagined a typical crowded South Asian city. Really? And when I came, I was like, wow, it's quiet, calm. You have terraces like this. That really surprised me. Yeah. Do you have a lot of hobbies, like besides hiking? Like, is, is there a lot of stuff to do here for you? Well, I try, as long as the weather is fine, to go out into nature as much as I can. So next to hiking, I also ride my bike around town or even in the mountain. I go horseback riding sometimes, which I absolutely love. Wow. And yeah, so that's what I do. Okay, let's let's um, order have something. A look at so the menu. you wanted one chai, yeah? Exactly, one dizzy chai. And one cappuccino, please. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you actually go bike riding, cycling here. I do. And okay. I love it. And I would imagine that people stare at you or maybe you would even hear negative comments but I do feel yeah nobody there may be look but I never heard a negative comment and you actually also see more Pakistani women riding a bike As which well. I really love and yeah. there you've never seen any negative comments either when you see them riding in Islamabad I haven't heard it but yeah. of course I'm not with them all the time yeah, yeah. that's true I'm, I'm sure it happens elsewhere but that's amazing like so you mentioned you also do yoga and if I'm not wrong you do your own yoga classes here in Islamabad right I do I love teaching yoga I love doing yoga yoga and I got a nice group together here and the nice thing is that it's not only expats but also my Pakistani friends who now come to my class oh, and wow. we try to practice once a week. I think that's really popular here like a lot of people are really into yoga that's what I've noticed here. Yeah and going to the gym like people really I think start noticing like that you need to do something for your health and yeah. so many of my Pakistani friends do boot camps and go to the gym every day. It's Really cool to see. Wow. So uh, do you feel like you're getting more fit here in Islamabad than <laughs> in Germany, maybe? <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, you have the Pakistani food on the other That's hand. That's true. So it's <laughs> difficult to stay that fit. Maybe it balances itself out exactly. then in the end. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about your work again. Um, a lot of people know you from social media, especially as the youth ambassador of Germany to Pakistan. So what does that entail exactly? Well, at the embassy, I remember it was last year that the UNDP youth report came out and we really started talking more about youth because Pakistan is such a young country. Like, I mean, 60% of the population is under 30. Right, yeah. So it's like this, this huge amount. And we were like, what do we actually do at the embassy? and we didn't do that much so we were like we need to improve our our cooperation with the youth and also get into contact with them mm. and that's why we decided we wanted to have a youth ambassador and my prime task is to actually start a conversation with the Pakistani youth and hear about what they expect from their future. Wow, so that's mainly done through social media then? Is it's mostly, true? it's because of course it's also a time issue. I mean, I do it next to my normal job yeah, as development counselor. Exactly. And social media, I found an excellent tool to actually get an impression of what the youth is talking about in the country. Um, because, you know, working at an embassy, you're a bit restricted. I mean, yeah. you don't get out that much. I'm in the office a lot. You meet a lot of people who are in the expert diplomacy circle. Yeah. So social media, I find for diplomats, is such a good way to get a view into other parts of countries. Yeah, so you have a really huge following on Twitter, especially like something like 60,000 followers yeah. around that. And um, people love your posts and your photos and your selfies all over Pakistan. What, what kind of posts do they like the most and what do you think it is behind I mean what is what is the reason why people really like your stuff on social media um, so much I think it's a difficult question because I asked it myself all right I'm, still, I'm like <laughs> why does everybody like what I post um, <laughs> but I think the the key is authenticity mm. um, I really think that people see that what I post is not staged but it's about my experience in the country yeah and I, I noticed that the Pakistanis love to hear about your journey and how you have 
a perception of their country and what you experience. So I think I think that's the key. So most of your posts on social media about Pakistan are really positive and they're highlighting your amazing experiences around the country and people really get a sense that you really love it here. Do you think that's also another reason why you're so popular on Twitter? Um, I do think that's one of the reasons because I do notice when I also meet my followers in real life and they, they talk about Pakistan that they feel there is sometimes a lot of negativity when people talk about Pakistan and I think that's why they love it when foreigners are like oh my god Pakistan is beautiful yeah um, yeah and I don't know I think another a lot of people also said but you're also a woman and we don't have that many women on social media so that might also be a reason why my account is quite popular also with the female population and then a third reason I think is that I'm actually really funny as well and um, so, like you mentioned, a lot of people think that as, a, as somebody who works for the embassy, you might not be able to get around so much in the country. Um, how much do you actually get to interact with the youth directly? Um, well, I try to do it here in Islamabad and actually also, especially meet youth activists, people who have NGOs, reach out to the embassy, want to meet me. So there I, I, I get to see something and then of course when I travel in the country I also try to talk to, to youth and especially female youth. I mean for me it's just um, like matter close to my heart to also get the female perception of this. Of course, yeah. So what do you think then from your interactions on Twitter and elsewhere, what are the main issues for the youth in Pakistan right now? Well, I think um, a lot of them are a little bit concerned about their future because, I mean, everybody wants to have a good future for themselves and for their children. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, there's uncertainty about your education, if there's uncertainty about finding a job, I think that's that's something that really affects all the youth yeah. I've met. Yeah, and that's something I think is true also in the West. I mean, people, I mean, there is so much unemployment among the youth. Would you say this is like something that you feel is a similarity between Pakistan and maybe Germany? Well, I think um, similarities maybe said a little bit too much mm. because of course, if you look of at the education prospects yeah. in Germany, it's, it's different. But uh, yeah, the worry about the future and wanting the best future and wanting to have freedom also yeah. to make your own decisions, I think that's something that I encounter with Pakistani youth and German yeah. youth. That's so there are a lot more similarities than you think. Yeah. Anything else that you have unexpectedly found to be like very similar between Germany and Pakistan? Um, well, it's very green. Like if I yeah. look at the hills, yeah. I mean, it could be in Germany and I didn't right. expect that. I yeah. didn't expect that. So the greenery, wow. Anything, well, I mean, I think people would say that Germans and Pakistanis are polar opposites <laughs> of each other. <laughs> would you agree with that? Um, well, sometimes, definitely. Like I always, I re still remember my first invitation by a Pakistani friend for dinner. Yeah. And he invited me for eight o'clock in the evening. Uh -huh. And so me as a German, we normally we're like 15 minutes late. Yeah. And I was totally stressing because I was so late for my German <laughs> terms. Like I was half an hour late and I was like, oh my God, it's so rude. And I arrived and I still remember his look when he looked at me totally shocked that I was already there because of course here like you just come later. Exactly. So there I was really like yeah I'm very German and I live in Pakistan. Yeah that has happened to me so many times by the way I'm almost always the first person to arrive and I'm like oh my god this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know even when I'm an hour late. <laughs> yeah I always <laughs> now ask is it German time or Pakistani, Pakistani time? Pakistani timing yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Okay, so you're actually from Heidelberg, this amazing little cute university town I'm in glad the south you know of. It. Yeah. I do know it, and I've been there myself. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, here in Pakistan, Heidelberg is known as the city where Allama Iqbal, the spiritual father of Pakistan and one of the most famous Urdu poets went to study for a while. Did you know that about Heidelberg when, when you were still living there before you came to Pakistan? Well, I have to, so, to say I knew a little bit about Iqbal, although I didn't know that much about also his beautiful poetry. Mm. But in Heidelberg, there's actually a big street that's called Iqbal Street. Right. So I basically grew up with the name and 
uh, yeah, and always wondered, like, you know, wanted to find out more. So I think it's perfect that I ended up here. It's kind of yeah. like it was meant to be. Wow, that's amazing. Your ambassador, or now, unfortunately, previous ambassador, Martin Kobla, he recently left and Pakistanis really loved him, probably for the same reason. They really like you as well because he really liked to promote a more positive image of Pakistan on social media especially. So how was it working with him? What, what was the experience like? Well, I mean, working with Martin was really inspiring. Like he was um, the boss that has impressed me the most so far in wow, my work. Really? Um, because it was just, he had so much energy and it, For was his his age. Last, yeah. and it was his last posting in his career. You know, you could also take it slow, but like every day he came to work, you just saw the passion he had for his work and then also that he had for Pakistan hmm. and improving Pakistani-German relations. So that really was, uh, yeah, every day it made my work better working with him. That's amazing. And what do you think it was about Pakistan that he liked so much? Well, I think, um, I mean, Pakistan never gets boring. That's very true. And cool. <laughs> um, you, can, you can go out and actually meet the people. And yeah. I think that's what he also saw as a part of his ambassadorship and part of his duty to be in Pakistan and actually go out and meet people. Yeah. An inspiring thing with Martin was if you traveled with him, of course, we would meet all the dignitaries as well, but he would also really talk to the people on the street. Like hmm. he would buy his own vegetables. He would talk to the sellers and ask them, what do you think about Pakistan? Like, what do you expect from the government? Like he really was interested. He also always asked our drivers for their opinion on like the political states and affairs. No you know, he was really, he took everybody seriously. And I think people noticed that. Yeah. Wow. That's really impressive. I, I think most of his followers were Pakistani though on, on social media, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so uh, do you feel that in Germany people found out that one of their ambassadors became kind of this social media celebrity in Pakistan? Did any of his like promotion of Pakistan make it all the way to Germany, would you say? Um, yeah, definitely, because who picked up on it was the press. So there were several articles about the Twitter star ambassador in Pakistan. And what they also picked up on in the articles was actually like the everyday things Martin did in Pakistan. You know, like the German ambassador is riding a bicycle in Rawalpindi. Because of course that's also not the perception that we have of Pakistan and Germany. So he actually found a really good way to show a more realistic picture of Pakistan in German media. Yeah. Do you think that's also maybe helping in encouraging more tourists to come to Pakistan perhaps now? Well, I think, I mean, maybe in the long run. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially when, I mean, there are now some, some new developments regarding getting visa easier yeah. and the NOC requirements, um, but of course, I mean, parts of the country, we as Germany still have a travel yeah. advice, so it's not yeah. that easy to, yeah. for tourists to travel all over Pakistan yeah. like Martin did. What is your favorite food in Pakistan? What do you like the most? Mm, it's such a difficult question because there are so many foods I like, but what I really like to do is actually getting street food. Really? So what do you think if we go to Rawalpindi and try some street food? I would love that. Let's, Let's go. go. So now we're finally leaving Islamabad. Are yeah, you ready I, for Pindi? I am. <laughs> Do you I like love going? going. I yeah. love going to Pindi. I yeah. know. It's so different somehow. Like, you know, you just get this like sense of more traditional Pakistan. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, I'm very grateful that I live in Islamabad because mm. I, I love the calm. I love the green. That's true. I love that there's almost no traffic. Yeah. Um, but of course, it's it's not it's not what I see when I travel. So I also feel when I go to Royal Pindi, I'm like, ha, ah, that's how I imagine Pakistan being like. And like, exactly. sometimes I love the the, the craziness. The craziness the yeah, craziness, I know yeah. you kind of miss it because it's 
in a way, it's one of my favorite things about Pakistan, like the the colorful street life and all yeah. of that. But then at, sometimes it gets to be a bit much. Like I can't imagine living in Pindi maybe like every day. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Like a lot of my mm. staff from the embassy, some of them live in Rebel Pindi, so they oh, also really? do the drive. And I'm always in awe. I'm like, wow, that's really yeah. something. And there's like so much traffic on the way there. It is, yeah. mm. Oh, you mean like the local the stuff? Local yeah, stuff. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Of course, as expats, we all live in the yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's true what you said about the greenery because I think Islamabad is known as the greenest city in Pakistan. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but I think. Well, I mean, from the cities that I visited, mm. it's definitely the greenest and. I love that people also identify with it. Like, I mean, yeah. there are a lot of drives now where people actually go to the parks and pick up litter and say green Islamabad. And I mean, there's the Clean Green Pakistan campaign yeah. that picked up oh. in Islamabad um, a lot. So I think it's great that people really see that as a defining factor of their city. Hmm. So um, you've also tweeted a lot about planting trees in Pakistan. Is that also something that's really close to your heart personally or is it like an embassy thing also? like a, a um, I would say both. I mean mm. for our embassy we also started the Green It campaign we call it mm. where we really want to show that for the future of Pakistan like you need a clean environment. Yeah. Um, but also me personally like I mean I love the green um, but also, I mean, I work in, in development aid and sustainability is a big topic for us. And mm. if, if you look at the, the pollution that is there, you need trees. I mean, you yeah. know, Pakistan <laughs> needs more trees. So I'm really happy when I can help planting one. Mm. And what about like all the other cities? You mentioned that they're not as green. Is, is this whole tree planting thing going on in, in other cities as well? Um, well, I know a lot about uh, the tree planting campaign in KP mm -hmm. um, because that's where the billion tree tsunami started. All right, okay. And um, yeah, and Germany is looking into ways at the moment to actually support it because we mm -hmm. think it's a great initiative of Pakistan. And there, I think they really got everybody together from like the little villages mm -hmm. to uh, planting more trees in Peshawar. Yeah. Wow, that's really amazing. And another thing, you know, that's different here in Islamabad is obviously the traffic. Like you don't, you don't spend like hours stuck in a traffic jam. Do you drive yourself here? I do drive myself and I was actually surprised about it. I thought when I came, I was like, I'm going to Pakistan. I don't want to drive. I'm going to get a driver. But then I arrived here and in Islamabad, everybody I mean, drives. Everybody yeah, drives. Do, and yeah. actually I found Pakistani way of driving, it's a little bit more chaotic it is. than the German it way. Is. <laughs> but for me, I'm not the best car driver myself, and yeah. I actually found it easier to drive here because everybody yeah. expects you to, to mess up and not yeah. know the rules. So everybody is looking out for everybody. So That's I feel amazing. I actually feel safer driving here. I'm so glad to hear that now you've inspired me to start driving because it's been like so many years, well, two and I still haven't started driving because I'm so scared of driving on the wrong side of the road. Was that <laughs> difficult for you? Uh, I thought it would be, but actually that's the easiest. Really? Like it goes so fast and now when I go back to Germany, I'm like, they drive on the wrong side of the <laughs> road. <laughs> and then you get in trouble there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh dear. No, but we should, we should drive together one time. We it's should. Not Maybe we bad. should start our own driving school. I'll be happy to be the teacher. I'll be the first guinea pig for you. <laughs> Welcome back. We finally reached Rawalpindi and now it's time to try some traditional street food. Let's go. Can we have two Golgaffe, please? And what's in them? That's a very good question that I don't have an answer for. Oh, it's actually chickpeas. Yeah, they put some chickpeas, I think, and maybe potatoes, and it's actually super spicy, so you might want to be a little bit careful. And then when you have it, you just put the whole thing in your mouth, basically, because otherwise it's like going to be a disaster. <laughs> so, let's see if I've been in Pakistan long enough for this. Yeah, I'm sure you have. <laughs> wow. 
but it's so nice. Yeah. That's what I love about street food, that you see how they make it. Exactly, you know? exactly. And you're just like, oh, that's what I'm there eating. There we go. And now the, yeah, it is potatoes and chickpeas and I guess onions and some masala. And then it goes in and then there is some kind of a, I don't know, a sauce or something. Some white stuff? Yeah. Kind of like yogurt? And then or? there is some like water kind of a thing. I don't know. Let's see okay. what we get. And it's really like a step-by-step -step introduction. Yeah. And you know that this is actually a funny thing. This is called pani puri in in other parts. Pani puri. Yeah, in like um, in southern parts of India. Like if you go to Bombay, then it's going to be called pani puri. But and then in northern India and in Pakistan, it's called golgappe because like gol means like round. You know. Golgappe. Yes. I remember that. This is one of my favorite things, like I've had it in so many South Asian countries. So I've been actually looking forward to having this. So. Wow, so you yeah. located, I was This is the thing I was talking oh, about. Okay. So you, uh, yes, you, you dip, dip it, it in. in there, yeah, I think. So it looks like it's ready. Let's sit down. It's getting a bit windy. Oh, look at that, here it comes. So it's been a while for me as well, so I'm not entirely sure, but you definitely need one of these. <laughs> and um, so the idea is, so you're just gonna grab one. one of these mm -hmm. from here. Then you try to grab some of the water, whatever it is, inside it. Somehow like this, and then you just put the whole thing in your mouth. Uh-oh, this is horrible. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, one, two, three, go. Spicy. It's really good, but that is like the messiest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> you need a lot of adventurous ingredients. <laughs> I think you need like practice. No, I'm obviously I not very not good at this. It's possible to break it out. Uh oh, and it's getting really windy now. It is. But it's so nice to be sitting like outside here, you know? I know, like I didn't think when I came to Pakistan that that would be possible. I know, you know? Right. To just sit outside. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's late, it's, it's already dark out, you exactly. know? And you see women walking on the street. Mm. Yeah. Nobody cares that we sit here. It's yeah, that's that's quite surprising. And it's, it's really amazing that your embassy these days also allows you to do stuff like this, that it's not considered like a security threat for you or anything like that. That really shows how much things have changed, right? I mean, for our embassy at the moment, it's a family posting. So yeah. that means that actually people bring their children. Cool. Like one of my colleagues, he has yeah. four children with him oh. living in Pakistan. And they're like going to school here. They're and going everything. to school, they wow. have a normal life. So That's I amazing. Whoa. I think we're going to have to move because <laughs> it's getting really know, quite windy, windy here. But, um, or maybe we can. What, what is your favorite street food? You said you you really well, like... I really like... I saw they have chicken tikka over yeah. there. So that is always a staple that I can eat. Okay. So maybe we get some of that. Maybe we could. Yeah, let's go try some. Yeah. Can we have one chicken tikka, please? Uh-oh. <laughs> And I'm always glad I'm not vegetarian. Exactly. I think it's maybe not the best place for vegetarian. Maybe not, yeah. <laughs> look at that. Just look at the color of all yeah. the spices. I think that will take a while. It's probably going to take a while, so we might want to sit down for a bit and yeah. maybe try our. <laughs> we'll go up again. <laughs> we'll have some chai at the chai. We could have chai later, yeah. So, Marion, tell me about your travels around Pakistan. You've been to quite a lot of exciting places, right? Yeah, I mean, I try to travel a lot. It's not always that easy because yeah. as diplomats, we need permission to travel outside of Islamabad. Yeah. But for work, uh, I go to KP a lot. Mm. Um, and I always find it fascinating how diverse Pakistan is. Yeah. Um, like in KP, I traveled of course to Peshawar, but I also went to Nashira. I went to Haripur. We went to little villages where Germany supports, um, like for example, health stations or government buildings. And yeah, it's 
if you're there and then I travel to Karachi next, I'm just like, wow, like, you know, the culture is so different and it's such a diverse country, so rich, yeah. um, that I find it fascinating and I don't get sick of traveling around as much as I can. And you mentioned that you also got the chance to go camping in, in a really exciting place in Pakistan. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I know. I mean, that was so far definitely my favorite travel. I went up north and went to the Shandur Polo Festival, oh, wow. which is really a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, I don't even know, you know where to start. It was like this mountain scenery and then the polo games the people watching, like they basically build like this tent city for oh, the wow. polo festival. Amazing. The friendliness of the people. Wow, it's. I know. <laughs> it's like the monsoon. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it was yeah. one of those things where you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like yeah. we were actually camping, and you Did know, you and see, then like the stars and everything at night yeah, when you went to bed. Like you leave oh, the wow. tent at night and you look at the stars and it's just stunning. And you're like, wow, I'm in the I mountains in Pakistan. Yeah. Camping. I'm sure you could have seen yeah. like the Milky Way as well, which you usually can't because there's exactly. so much light. light. Oh, yeah, that's fascinating. Incredible. And I really the horses go. and the people who, you know, they take it so serious, the, the polo games. And yeah. it's such a beautiful game as well. Wow. And yeah, and the friendliness of the people. Of course, everybody, you know, sees their foreigners. Everybody comes up to talk to you and is friendly. And yeah, it was a once in a lifetime experience. So what's what's your favorite place that you've visited in Pakistan? I mean, besides Shandur, um, I have to say, oops. <laughs> Wow, it's getting a bit it. crazy yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, I, I loved Karachi, which surprised yeah. me because everybody was like, Karachi, oh my God, it's horrible, it smells, it's so dirty, it's chaos. But when I was there, I found like you can find so many hidden beautiful spots. Oh, yeah? And it really, like, it was happening. Like, we went to so many art galleries where you saw yeah. young artists. We went to great restaurants, cafes. Um, the, looking at the sunset at the beach, yeah. you know, where all the families are getting their food, you can ride camels, like, yeah, it was just very alive. And I didn't think about that when I traveled to Karachi, I expected to hate it. Really? And yeah, so that was, it's, yeah, one of my favorite places, I think. Do you have any, like, like in German, you say, time tip, like an insider's tip for Karachi? Um, yeah, really the art galleries. Oh, yeah? I think that was really what impressed me the most. Um, and you find them everywhere. There are too many to like single one out. But yeah. really look at the art when you go to Karachi. Great. Okay, I guess the weather is getting yeah. like really <laughs> bad. So I'd suggest let's move over there. <laughs> okay. Hmm, that's much better. You mentioned that you've lived in other Muslim countries before, that's Afghanistan and Yemen, right? Exactly. And Yemen, that was before the conflict started there, right? 2008. And Afghanistan, that was when? I was there in 2012 to 2014. Okay. And yeah, and I lived up north in Mazar Sharif and then in Kabul as well. Okay, so how would you compare your experiences in these two countries to Pakistan? Um, well, especially my experience in Afghanistan was, of course, very different because of the security situation. Yeah. So, what made a huge difference is that we were more restricted from the normal population. Right. So, we kind of lived like in a security bubble. Yeah. Um, and that made it hard to really connect with the country. I can like, imagine. I still. Yeah. I still like my time in Afghanistan, but if I compare it to the connections I make here just by being friends with Pakistanis exactly. and to talk with them and yeah. do stuff like this, I just feel I get a better impression of the country because I actually not only live in it, but live with the people Absolutely. who uh, uh, have their home here. And what about Yemen? What, what was your experience there like? Um, well, Yemen, I didn't, I didn't work for an embassy, but I, I was there working for a university. So back then I also had the feeling that I was really living with the people because yeah. I, I lived in a tiny Yemeni house and had also Yemeni friends. 
Um, but of course, Yemen is way more traditional than, than Pakistan. Yeah. So it was more restricted. The clothes you were wearing, oh my god, it looks delicious. It does. Doesn't it look so good? Your favorite. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to do We're gonna have to dig in. <laughs> Pakistani way. So we missed some naan, probably. Yeah. Um, so it was more difficult than here, but I still had beautiful interactions. And also, it's a beautiful country to travel. It's also stunning nature. So in that regard, it's very similar to Pakistan. Because when people hear Yemen, they don't think about beautiful landscapes. Right. Or fascinating interactions with people on the street. and You know, and I feel it's a little bit the same with Pakistan. When I tell people I live in Pakistan, they think I wear a headscarf and hide in my house all day. Yeah. <laughs> so in that regard, Yemen and Pakistan for me are, are, are similar and that's why I love to talk about my experiences in those countries back home. Yeah, that, that, is, that is very true. Mm. Oh wow. And spicy. So what about your family back home? Are they like worried about you living here or they've kind of started to understand it's not really as bad. I mean, the good thing is that after you've been in Afghanistan, yeah, I know what you <laughs> everything mean. else is fine. So my mom was there, actually, she was like, ah, Pakistan, oh, that's not too bad. That's exactly um. how it was with my mom as well. When I moved back here from Afghanistan, she was like, oh, thank God, <laughs> finally. Yeah. No, and I mean, what I always think what helps a lot is to send pictures. Um, yeah. to tell them about my daily life and I actually also hope that my parents will come visit. Oh, they will? They plan to. When is that going to be? Mm, maybe this summer. Oh, it's going to be hot. <laughs> I know, but we'll go up north. So yeah, that, that would be They nice. like the mountains, so yeah. I think they will really enjoy it. Yeah, so you don't get this kind of stuff in Europe. <laughs> oh, good. I'm just in some random store. Do you have a cook living with you? And yeah, I have a housekeeper who yeah. also cooks. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he's always very disappointed because he has been working for Germans for a long time. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like nine years. Yeah. So he actually knows a lot of German dishes. Uh huh. And I always, when I ask him to cook for me, I'm always like, can you make some dal? Right? <laughs> so he's like, like my no. favorite food. <laughs> I think he's really disappointed. He's like, why doesn't she ask me for schnitzel? <laughs> you know? I always ask for dal. So you don't really like to eat German food here then? Mm. Well, I feel like while I'm here, I should take advantage of the spices you have here, Absolutely. the abilities. And yeah. yeah, I mean, ask me again in my third year. Maybe then yeah. I'll be like, I eat schnitzel every day. <laughs> but for now, I still I'm happy with my doll. Mm, great. When you go back to Europe, it's sometimes hard yeah. because then it's so you're so used to maybe use your fingers. Exactly. But it's seen as impolite. It is, and so you're like, you oh my god, what am I doing? And like fancy dinner, you can't be like, oh, I'll just do it with my hands. So <laughs> then I find hard to adjust. Yeah, you have to get like a reverse culture shock. <laughs> That's like what what's happened to me with like clothes. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I've gotten so used to covering my legs all the time that when I go back home, I just can't wear like skirts anymore. I just can't do it. <laughs> Although I have to say one thing I do miss is wearing skirts for work because mm. all my business outfits were like evolving about my skirts. So I'm sure. That's yeah. one thing I really miss here. Yeah. And what, what else did you find like challenging here in Pakistan? Well, I do think that it is, um, living here as a woman, I mean as a Western woman I have more freedom than a Pakistani <laughs> woman, um, yeah. but still, of course it's, my movements are more restricted than in Germany because I just draw more attention <laughs> and it's not that common to see a woman doing stuff on her own. Um, yeah. And I'm here without a family, so I need to do the things on my own. So you know, I want to ride my bike on my own, I want to go hiking on my own. Yeah. And I think for Pakistani culture, that's a very weird thing to see, a woman doing stuff on her own. So yeah. that I still find challenging. But yeah. Yeah. You have to explain it and you draw attention and it's yeah. not a normal thing. Absolutely. And what about, so you, you've been here for about a year now, so that means you've also experienced being here during Ramadan. How, how was that experience for you? Um, well, people have warned me before and they were like, oh my god, Ramadan is such a hard time. Yeah. Um, 
I did find what people forget when they when they say that, when, when foreigners say that, is that it's a really festive time actually. Like Absolutely. it reminded me a lot about Christmas time in Germany. Oh really? Because <laughs> especially when it comes close to eat, like everybody gets excited and you buy the yeah. clothes and the presents and everybody is kinda in a good mood because it ends soon. And I also and I mean you get invited to so many iftar dinners, which yeah. is really nice as well. So you really get to experience the hospitality. And of yeah. course I mean I'm Christian so I'm not fasting. Of course I don't eat in public. Of but, course, yeah. Um, so for me it's not that hard. Yeah. Have you like so some people I noticed do this thing that they go out with their friends for like an iftar Okay, that's fun. <laughs> and the wind is getting crazy. Um, and then they stay out like practically all night till like 3 a.m. when they have their seri. And then that's like a really fun thing to do. Like all the streets are full of people at like 1, 2 a.m. Like, have you seen that? Um, I haven't. Yeah. I heard about it. I mean, last year I was still quite new when yeah. Ramadan came around. Yeah. So I actually also didn't have that many good. My Pakistani friends are yeah. good. So I really hope to experience that this year. Yeah, maybe we can go out for a Saturday one night. <laughs> Great. I think it's time for some dessert, right? Oh, I can always eat dessert. Yeah? What, what would you like have? to have? <laughs> it's up to you. What do you recommend here? Well, I think we should have some ice cream. I kind of feel in the mood for that. That sounds good. Yeah? Let's go. So alive, no? So yeah. many people out on the street. I know, it's it's quite getting quite late and yeah. like the weather is not the best, but still it seems like people just really love coming out with oh, their sorry. families and Oh it's look at that. Line yeah. for ladies. <laughs> so after you. <laughs> Hello, Slam Lekum. What kind of flavors do you have? Ice cream. Ice cream is very good. Okay, did you get that? Well, I kulfa think... I understood. Okay. One I... cup of uh, kulfa or one uh, separate cup of uh, strawberry. Okay. Oh, that's what I didn't hear. He was asking if, like, if we want it in one cup. Okay, and then I was like, no. wait, is he going to put both in one I'm not going to share. <laughs> yeah. Great. What a coincidence. This is yours. Thank you. Shukriya. How about over there? That looks nice. Here, this looks pretty this nice, looks right? Really nice. Oh wow! Wow. Bubble kidney by night. I know. Who <laughs> would have thought? <laughs> Let's try some of this ice mm. cream. Let's see if it's good. Not bad. Really good. Do you want to try mine? Hold on, I will. Kulfa. This is like a traditional Pakistani ice cream, I think. Yeah. Mm. The strawberry is good as well. That's amazing. Yeah, that's really good. Love it. I should have gone for that. <laughs> I'm so boring. Next time you my, know. <laughs> yeah, with my strawberry choice. Yeah. Oh well. Just always go for the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> is that your motto in life? <laughs> Especially when I travel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I asked you about your Geheim tip, your insider's tip for Karachi. What's your Geheim tip for the entire Pakistan? Um, I think not to be too afraid. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good yeah. Geheim tip for Pakistan. Interesting. That's very interesting and very true as well. Because I remember when I first came here in 2012, although the situation was different back then, I was really scared actually. And then after a while I was like, oh, it's, it's not that bad. But of course now it's even better. Like the situation is so much different. So. I mean, we do of course have travel advices against mm. some regions of the country. Yeah. So every tourist should look at that, especially yeah. all the German tourists. Yeah. Um, but it's with the not being too afraid, it's more about trying the new experiences. Yeah. Like, you know, going for the Kofa ice cream and yeah. going to a rubble Findi and see and not have the perception that you had before. Exactly. So, what do you think is your, what would you say is your favorite thing about Pakistan? Like, out of everything, culture, anything, anything that comes to your mind? Um, I think. The best thing about Pakistan are the people. Mm, like I really didn't expect it. Like 
for example, we had a meeting um, a couple of months ago where we had all of our development counselors at our embassies in Asia coming to Pakistan for a meeting. Mm -hmm. And before, they were really reluctant to come to Pakistan. Oh, really? It was a huge discussion. Um, and then they were here and we were in Lahore, all were blown away really? and they all said it was the people because it's really a big old sightseeing, you know, like Pakistanis come up to you and they're interested and where do you come from and welcome to you, their country and want to take selfies. They don't want to sell you anything, yeah. they just want to take a selfie. Yeah. So yeah, that's really the one thing that impresses me every day. Wow, that's amazing. So what do you think is the most interesting experience you've had here so far? Mm -hmm. I think the most interesting experience was meeting that many great women and hear their stories. Because I do think when we also think about Pakistan, we don't think that much about the women. Yeah. And to hear how women made their way here and a lot of times when they do things, they have to be the first ones. Like they have to be the first soccer player, they have to be the first yeah. girl who rides a bicycle in their village, mm. the first police officer yeah. who goes to the police force. So that is what impresses me the most and it's the most memorable, uh, meeting those women who really set an example. That's amazing. So I really hope you continue to have an amazing time in this country. And now we've almost reached the end of our program. And this is now the time where I always ask our guests to write something nice in our guest book. Oh, that's so Or our a visitor's book. Nice idea. Yeah. So I hope you can do that for us. I definitely will. All right. Here you go. Let me just open it for you. And you can write your name and okay. your comments Sorry. for us. <laughs> well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Oh wow, they Look smell so good. I'm going to give pretty. you one. Ooh, thank you. Wow. Hmm. Well, that will remind me of our evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marion, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank it was you a for lovely evening me. and lovely afternoon as well. And I hope you have a great time. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 <laughs> so that's it for tonight. Please join us again next week. Good night.